All right, I'm going to break down the truth on how to actually make money as a real estate agent in this video. But before we jump into that, I'm still getting a ton of messages from you guys on, hey, how do we have a conversation about potentially working with you as uh, my coach? And so for those that are committed to the goals that they have and you want to have a conversation about a coaching relationship, all you have to do, I'm going to put a link right in the description of this video. I'll also uh, pin a comment below this video. And if you want to have a conversation, just click on that link and then you can schedule a day and time that works best for you. We'll break down your business. You'll have an opportunity to ask some questions. We can ask some questions of you and then determine through that conversation if working together right now in a coaching relationship is something that you're ready for. So with that, let's jump into uh, today's episode. The question is, how do I make money in this business? And if you're not making uh, the money that you want, we're going to answer why that is in this video. The reality is 80 to 90% of the people in this business right now are not making the money that they uh, say they want to make. Well, fine. If that's the case, then we have to really dig into this and figure out why it's the case. So first and foremost, we have to look at what's going on here. First, this is a sales business. Why do I say it like that? Well, we have to break this down. Sales means first, that's the first word. If it's a sales business, yes, we are going to have to talk to people. Yep, I know, it's insane. We're going to have to deal with rejection. Yep, I get it. It's going to be difficult. It is not going to be easy. Yeah? It's a business. Okay, it's a sales business, meaning that we have to actually run it like a business. We probably have to have a schedule, right? We probably have to run a P&L statement every single month. We probably have to track our activities, so on and so forth. Once you can wrap your mind around that and you can make peace with the fact to say, okay, I'm in a sales business. I understand these concepts, Brandon. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of this. Okay, fine. If we look at the formula for making money in this sales business, which you and I both are in, if you are a real estate uh, agent, I mean, look at your license. It says real estate salesperson license. I mean, if that's not a dead nuts giveaway, I don't know what it is. All right. So let's just look at this. I call this the income formula. All right. The income formula. Here's, here's how it works. All right. It is your volume times skill times time equals income. And for most, the lack of. So what do I mean by that specifically? All right, let's break this down. If Let's first tar, uh, talk about volume. All right, volume is the number of conversations, number of conversations with, uh, we'll call it with a decision maker. The number of conversations with a decision maker daily. That's the first thing we have to look at. I'll break this down even more. Don't worry. That's number one. And then number two, how many face-to-face -face appointments are you on per week? That's what I mean by volume. So if we were to just stay here for a second... We have to say, or we have to ask ourselves rather, okay, how many conversations am I having with a decision maker on a daily basis? Well, I have the fortune to have coached now thousands of agents. And one of the first things that we do is we break down their business plan and we build a business plan and we take a look at where they're at now, where they want to go. And oftentimes when we ask this question, I get answers like zero or one or two or three. Not nearly enough. So the first thing that you have to say to yourself, if you really want to make money in this business, is how am I going to generate enough conversations such that 
It leads me on the number of appointments I need per week to sell the number of homes I need to make the money I want. Okay, we'll break that down in just a second. How many do I have to have? Well, if you look at this and say, okay, if I look at my business week over week over week over week, how many appointments am I going on? How many listing appointments am I going on per week on a consistent basis? Here's what we know. It takes, on average, okay, some of you have a different closing percentage, but on average, it takes two listing appointments met in order to take one listing. That's what we know. And what we also know is in order to generate that one listing, you're going to, that uh, that one listing appointment, you're probably going to have to set two appointments. You'd probably have to set two. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me just uh, mess that up. You're going to have to actually set four to go on two to take one. That's the truth. Why? Because not every appointment you set is going to come to fruition. Yeah. Some people will cancel on you. Some people will no show. You'll cancel some. Things happen. But it's about a 50% appointment set to appointment met ratio. Now, we also have to say, okay, well, how do I set these appointments? How many leads do I need to set those appointments? We know it's a 20% conversion. So if I just do that, you need to generate about 20 leads in order to set four appointments. So if you're going to take one listing per week, you're going to have to generate 20 leads per week. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, we also know that on average, 10% of the people you talk to daily will turn into an actual lead. So if we just take 20 leads and divide that by 0.10, that means that you need 200 conversations per week to take one listing. That's the numbers. If we remove all the emotion, that is the numbers, right? It's the truth. It's what it looks like. So if we break this down and we say, okay, if you say to yourself, I want one listing per week. And for some of you, that's probably, you probably don't even need anywhere close to that. So let's just, why don't we just cut that in half? Yeah. Instead of saying four uh, per month, why don't we cross that out and we'll say two per month. Most of you would be happier than a pig and you know what? If you had two listings per month. So in order to do that, we know that we need 200 contacts or 200 conversations to get one. So in order to get two, we need to have 400 conversations for the month. So the first question is, okay, well, where am I going to get those conversations from? So 400 conversations in a month. If you're working full time, 22 working business days, that's about 20 contacts per day. Where are those going to come from? This is where we get into lead generation and all of that. And there's only a handful of ways. And this is what I find to be the biggest number one challenge for most agents is they're just not having enough conversations daily that would lead them to enough appointments. So therefore they don't get enough listings. So this is volume. Okay. This is volume. And this is the first thing that you have to solve in order for you to hit the goals that you have. And so if you're not making the money that you want, the first thing that we would look at, if I was coaching you right now, is we would look at your daily volume. And then we'd look at your weekly volume. How many, based on those, the volume of conversations per week, how many appointments are you able to set per week and per month? So that's the volume. So one, we have volume. Next, all right, this will be kind of like a, a pyramid. The next thing we have to look at in the income formula is skills, right? Skills. All right. Specifically, when you solve the volume problem, which we just talked about, once you're having 
in this example, 20 conversations per day, 100 people per week, 400 people per month. That's about 5,000 conversations a year. Okay, that's the biggest challenge. Once you're doing that, then the second thing we have to look at if you're not making the money that you want is your skills. So specifically, what am I talking about? Remember, I said this is a sales business. So if you're talking to 400 people per month, the next thing we have to look at is how are you converting those? In other words, what is your contact to lead ratio? What is it? How well are you able to take a conversation with somebody that you know or someone you don't know and then turn them into a lead? What is that ratio? Then we can say, okay, what about your lead follow-up? When we look at your lead follow-up, because we know most qualified listing appointments come out of lead follow-up, how many of these leads are you turning into an actual listing appointment? set. What is that ratio? What is that percentage? So that's the second skill we would look at. That's the second skill that you would focus on. Then we would say, okay, cool. Well, now that you're setting these appointments, what is your listing appointment set versus met ratio? What is that? Meaning you could get people to say, yes, I'll meet with you, but how many of those people actually meet with you. Yeah. We're not done yet. This is the big, 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 this is going to answer the question for most of you, why you are not earning the money that you, you, you want to make. Then you have to say, okay, what is your listing appointment met to taken ratio? In other words, what is your closing percentage? If you go on 10 listing appointments, how many of those people will sign a contract? That's the next skill we look at. We're not done yet. What about your taken to sold ratio? What is that ratio? So if you take 10 listings, how many actually go to the closing table? This will tell us your understanding of the marketplace. This will tell us your ability to take good listings by telling the seller the truth versus just taking a bunch of overpriced listings that never sell. These are the skills I'm specifically talking about, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five really important skills. So once we solve the volume issue, the next issues we have to look at are the five skills that you need as an agent to make really, really good money in this business. And then lastly, when we look at the uh, income formula, we say time. So what is the length of time that you're doing number one and number two? Let me explain. So if you get to the point where you can have one of your lead generation strategies equal 20 contacts per day, how long have you been doing that for? Because there's something called pipeline maturity. And it takes time. This takes about three to six months to build before you start to see, before you start to see the fruit of your labor. And here's what happens is an agent says, okay, I'm going to do lead generation strategy X. Okay. I'm doing my hundred contacts per week, Brandon. And they do it for two weeks and they don't do anything. And then they stop. Well, if you look at the income formula, we have to have all three. We have to have enough volume, enough skills, and for enough time for this thing to start spitting out money. And this is the truth. This is why most agents aren't earning money. Number one, they aren't having enough conversations per day with what I would call their ideal client avatar, homeowners for most of you that want to get listings. They aren't doing that on any type of consistent basis, if we're being very honest. And then number two, they don't have great skills. If they were tracking their numbers, which I know, it's funny, you can laugh at that too. Uh, if they're tracking their numbers, we would look at these five skills and break this down. And because here's the other truth. 
in between all of these are different strategies, tactics, and skill development. So when I coach an agent, we look at all these ratios and I can clearly figure out where the issues are in their business because inside each one of these conversions are, like I just said, strategy, tactics, and skill development. So do you have the skills? And then if they have the skills and they have the volume, are they patient enough? Do they have what we call the stick to to stick to this thing long enough for it to start working in their business? And so as you think about your own business and you're being super honest around, okay, I have to look in the mirror. I got to stand on the scale and, and, and face reality. When you look at the list of these things, it's virtually guaranteed that the answer to your issue of not making the money that you want to make is somewhere in here. I'm going to ask you, which one is it? Put that in the comments so I understand where the biggest challenges are so that when I make future videos, I can focus on the content that will help to serve you best.